Welcome colleagues. I hope you're all safe and well. Welcome to this uh, pre-recorded session focusing on Unit B from the Sports 2019 qualification. Unit B being health, well-being and sport. And this session will focus on some ideas and perspectives around unit specific support for this unit within this suite of qualifications. My name is Marina Bowler uh, and I am a lead trainer for sport and sport and exercise science. I may well have met with you before colleagues uh, in different training events, either online or face to face. So without further ado, let's have a look at the unit and delve a little bit deeper into aspects of the unit that I'm hoping you will find useful. So the objectives of the session today are to provide some teaching support for this unit. Hopefully, um, not in this session, but when you play back this recording within your own setting and within your own teams, you'll be able to share some ideas with your colleagues around the teaching and learning of this unit and the assessment of this unit. Some of you may already be delivering this unit. Some of you may have delivered the unit previously. And indeed, some of you may be looking to start the course and to deliver this unit in your next term semester or indeed your next academic year. We'll explore some resources and hopefully provide support for remote teaching or face to face teaching in whichever arena you're working in at this current time. So just a little bit of information around this unit. It's a mandatory unit, as you're probably well aware, across the suite of the 2019 sport qualifications. So the fitness pathway, the performance and excellence pathway, the outdoor pathway and the sports coaching pathway. It's a 90 guided learning hour internally assessed unit. All of the units within this qualification are internally assessed. And this unit will probably be familiar to you colleagues from previous iterations of the qualification in the QCF days, where we had exercise, health and lifestyle, fitness training and programming, fitness testing, a little bit of, of sports psychology within this unit and nutrition. So you'll see colleagues that this unit is um, holistic in its nature and also includes some of the aspects of previous units. So therefore, if you were involved in, in delivering previous units, then hopefully, a lot of this content will be very familiar to you. So all of the good practice and resources that you've previously utilised within teaching of, of the former versions um, of the unit, you can bring into the teaching and learning and assessment of this unit B. So within this unit, our learners will explore the importance of physical activity and physiological and psychological health and well-being and suggest ways to improve their own and their peers physical and mental health status. Obviously in these challenging times this work around and this content around this unit is absolutely paramount and there is a lot of useful um, workable information 
that we can resource and resources that we can use within the teaching and learning of this unit. So remember colleagues that an RQF unit of which this qualification is, is different to the QCF, as I've just said, larger holistic units with that increased opportunity to ask our learners to apply their learning to certain scenarios, to case studies, and within the context of the unit. It brings together previous iterations of units and ensures that the units within this suite of qualifications and indeed unit B are fit for purpose for both higher and further education and also al are aligned to industry standards. So organisations such as SINSPA. So these qualifications were developed, as you're probably aware, um, very much in alignment with industry. So they've been rubber stamped by industry and will also provide our learners with opportunities to progress in employment or indeed onto further and higher education. There are three authorised assignment briefs, and we'll talk a little bit more about authorised assignment briefs as we move forward with today's session. And you will use these um, as a, a format, as a template uh, for you to um, assess the learning aims. So we work in learning aims with these qualifications colleagues and the assessment criteria. So there's work to be done around the authorised assignment briefs, but they provide an excellent resource and template for you to utilise and work with within your teams to effectively assess your learners understanding and skills and knowledge across this unit. So there are three authorised assignment briefs, AABs, uh, for this unit. Uh, the first one covers learning aim A, and you'll see their colleagues on the slide, the pass, merit and distinction criteria. Learning aims B and C are assessed together, again across the pass, merit, and learning aim B and C distinction is, is, are, is, are assessed together. And then the final assessment is learning aim D that again covers your pass, merit and distinction criteria. You'll see on the slide colleagues, I've put a link to the specification and sample assignments. And I just want to give you the opportunity to just have a look at the specification there colleagues and this is the coaching specification but as I said earlier the qualification the, uh, sorry this unit should I say covers is mandatory across the, the suite of qualifications and if we move down through the specification You'll see there's unit B, the 90 guided learning hour unit, mandatory across all sizes of the, qual the coaching qualification. And then as we move through the specification, and it's really useful even if you have taught um, BTEC units before, it's really useful to revisit the specification uh, again, because there is a lot of information covered within the qualification that you will find useful as educators in terms of teaching and learning and delivery and assessment of the unit. So the unit is there, colleagues, with the, the learning aims 
clearly displayed. You then have a summary of the unit, which gives you an indication of recommended assessment methods and approaches. But again, you have freedom of choice here, colleagues, to be able to select the assessment method, so a report or a presentation or a practical activity that suits your setting, your centre, your team, and also your cohort of students. You then have the learning content, the unit content, broken down into A1, A2, so on and so forth, according to the learning aim, which gives you blocks of content that you will deliver to the students and you will add to your scheme of work and ensure that they have that holistic understanding and knowledge to be able to attempt the three summative assessments. Remember, within the teaching and learning phase, colleagues, we can use as much formative assessment as we need to. So we can give lots of practice assignments, we can offer lots of case studies, we can offer lots of practical activities, we can offer um, assi mock assignments to our students within that formative teaching and learning phase, ensuring that our students have the best possible chance when we launch that summative assignment, summative assessment to them to be able to attempt that and be successful in terms of gaining all of the assessment criteria. So practice makes perfect, colleagues. So do take some time in that formative stage of teaching and learning and spend some time in there giving your students, your learners, the best possible opportunities to develop their skills, knowledge and understanding. We have the assessment criteria and all of the units are laid out in the same way across the specification. We have the essential information for assignments and forgive me colleagues because I'm sure you, you're all well aware of this but I don't think there's any harm in, in kind of refreshing memory and, and, and revisiting these, but we have the essential information for assessment decisions. So they will embellish and give your learners and yourself as, as the educator an idea of what you are looking for when the students submit their summative assignment for the distinction merit and pass assessment criteria. So really useful to look through the essential information for assessment decisions, colleagues, alongside the assessment criteria and the unit content and the delivery guide, which we'll, we'll look at in a little while, to be able to gain a full picture of how the unit is assessed and the expectations of the unit assessment. And again, you'll see that essential information covers all four of the learning aims. Just skipping right to the end of the specification, you have a number of appendices. And within these appendices, you'll have the glossary of terms, so appendix one. So these are what we know as the command verbs. And again, colleagues, that a top tip here is to really ensure that our learners are very comfortable with the understanding of what these terms actually mean. So what does it mean to, to analyze someone's physiological health and well-being? And how do we do that? And what results are we expecting from that? How we compare 
results and how we design effective questionnaires, mental health and well-being questionnaires. So it's really worth spending some time and I've seen some fantastic practice um, out there around activities that really enhance and embellish the understanding of the command words. But those are all in the back of the specification colleagues and really worth exploring if you haven't done so already. You then have, um, I'm just clicking a little bit back and forth here, colleagues, so do, do forgive me. You do have information there about types of evidence. And really important as well to think about the evidence that you want your, your learners to produce. And being very clear about our expectations around that. So if we're asking for a presentation, what do we actually mean by that? Has that got um, a set amount of slides? Should it include visuals and embedded links? Should it include a reference list or a bibliography at the end of the presentation? Is it going to be a single presentation or with a peer? So being very clear about our what we're asking our, our students, our learners to produce. So that's the specification colleagues and you'll find that on the sport webpage in the link that I've detailed on that slide there. Likewise, you will find the delivery guide and I'm just going to, um, leave that link there for a moment or two because we will we will revisit that as as you know a little later on in the presentation but the links are there top tip again colleagues bookmark those links because the website is vast and tr and as teachers were time poor as educators were time poor so we need to find find information quickly and as effectively as possible. So top tip, do bookmark links um, so that they are easy to locate when you need them. Just an overview there of, of the suite of qualifications within this 2019 qualification. And there we have the coaching, the fitness and personal training, the performance and excellence and the sport outdoor. And there you can see at the bottom there, I've just popped the mandatory units, which are unit A and unit B. And obviously today we're focusing on, on unit B, uh, the health, well-being and sport. But just to kind of give you a, a, an overview there. And I think that you know, it's quite a useful slide that colleagues to share um, with students on induction, but also with parents and guardians and caregivers so that they can actually have an idea on what is being studied and how those, those two units in particular can map into further and higher education and qualifications but also how useful they are within the world of work and employability and developing employability skills as the other units but these two mandatory units in particular uh, offer our, our learners a plethora of skills and knowledge um, that is very transferable so I find that, that slide really useful when I'm talking to prospective students and to parents and, and guardians and caregivers. So we've just had a little look, colleagues, at the command words. And I always would, would, would advise or invite you to kind of pause me <laughs> at this point and to have an investigate around the command words within unit B and identifying those specific 
command words uh, within command verbs within a unit is again a really useful starting point when we launch the unit to our to our learners to get them to really understand and invite and to do some activities around the specific command verbs that they are going to need to utilize to gain the assessment criteria to achieve the assessment criteria but also to feel comfortable about aspiring to the higher criteria and I'm sure you have lots and lots of activities around developing that further understanding, you know, to use them as starters and plenary activities and to really ensure, you know, for example, I've got the command words around sort of blown up on A3 and laminated around my teaching space um, so that students and learners become very familiar with them and comfortable in using them in everyday language and identifying the, the, the ones of particular, uh, that are particularly specific to, to each unit is useful to do. You might highlight those on the assignment brief, for example, and you will refer to them as the unit and the delivery of the learning aims progresses. So you might want to sort of stop me for a, for a few minutes and talk about how how you, how that's actually going to happen within your your teaching space classroom setting so again just to, to reiterate um we've just had a look at those which is is absolutely great to, to do um and to you know really think about the, the differences between the command words in the old um, qualification, the old iteration of the qualification, um, you will see that some of the command verbs are, are new to this qualification and that um, within the pass assessment criteria, for example, you will see more of explore, to what extent, justify even and you will see that the command words have um, developed as the qualification has developed and what the students really need to be able to be comfortable doing and be confident doing in terms of analysis and evaluation and justification to gain those assessment criteria so again, I've put the link on that slide for your colleagues to, to assist you there, to find the information easily. So worth doing some work around or adding to the work that you do around the, the command words. And to help you further, colleagues, we're very caring and sharing within in sport and fitness and sport and exercise science. That's what we, what we do and what we're used to doing working in a team i've actually identified the command verbs there for you for each of the learning aims so you'll be able to pick those out and to do some teaching and learning and assessment around those so that's you know useful to 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 use as a slide i'm hoping um, when you're launching the units or indeed the individual learning aims to your students and your learners. The specification content is very relevant uh, and meaningful for the sector that we are, we are working within. Um, and that was part of the rewrite in terms of exploring exploring the relevance and the rewrite of the qualification in terms of ensuring it was fit for purpose for the industry 
and for students progressing on to further and higher education. So with that in mind and to further cement that relevance, those are some useful websites, examples, and the, you know there are a lot more. Um, but just to pick out, you know, five of those in terms of students gaining information and resources. And finding relevant content um, to enable that range of, of delivery and practice assessments and making our students or learners feel comfortable within the unit, then these websites, these organisations will provide a whole range of information to build up your resource bank, to build case studies around, to think about linking in to potential visits or visiting speakers. And also to think about developing a more holistic view around the whole topic of, of health and well-being. And as I said earlier, colleagues, there is such a lot of information um, around at this time. You know, it's really been highlighted the importance of physiological and psychological health. You know, it's never been more important than it is, it is now. So there is such a lot of information. It's building up those resources in your toolkit, in your teaching files, teaching folders that you can draw upon to really bring this unit to life um, and deliver in, as I know colleagues do, creative, interesting, informative, exciting, ways. So just five uh, examples of websites. As I say, there are there are more um, and you will have your own, your own resources and contacts that you can utilize to bring this, this unit to life. Our delivery guide will further supplement the delivery of, of this unit. So I just want to share that with you now, colleagues. And hopefully on screen now, you can see the, the delivery guide. Let's just move it, right, brilliant. Um, and this was, was written to, as I say, add to the resource bank for the teaching and learning and assessment of, of, of this unit. And to supplement the excellent resources that, you know, I have no doubt you have already within your teaching teams. So it gives an overview of ideas and thoughts to approach the unit, as do all of the delivery guides um, for the different units within this suite of qualifications. But obviously we're just focusing on, on unit B at this time, colleagues, for this session. But if we just have a, a sort of walk through the delivery guide, Just put together some ideas here of activities and thoughts and different perspectives of how these units may this these learning aims rather may be may be delivered. So things like a virtual visit or an actual physical visit, if situations allow. Um, to a to an outdoor activity centre or a physical fitness provider, so that students can actually and learners can actually see how 
physical activity is delivered, how organizations work, how systems work, and what type of participants are actually accessing the offers and, and why they access that particular centre and how that centre attracts participants. You know, what do they do that, what offers do they make that really engage participants? And actually seeing that or a virtual visit, you know, walk through um, a YouTube um, clip of an organisation will really bring those organisations to life. Within this learning aim, our learners have got to think about the categories of participants. So what type of participants do certain activities attract? So thinking about the whole range of participants, able-bodied, disabled participants, um, participants of a different race, different gender, so that intersectionality of participants that access physical activities. So this learning aim is really focused on on the type of activities and the type of participants. So you'll refer back to the unit content and you'll see within that unit content, colleagues, the, the groups of participants that you want our learners to focus on and also ideas around the types of activities. Because what we're trying to, do, to get our learners to do within this learning aim is to evaluate, to look at you know, the strengths and, and, and weaknesses of social, financial, environmental and historical reasons for providing physical activity and sport within the UK. So these units are, are focused on, on the UK. This unit rather is focused on, on the UK, what happens in the UK. Um, London Olympics, for example, could be you know, we've got the Commonwealth Games coming up. So there's lots and lots of uh, national activities that you, and resources that you will be able to tap into to explore this learning aim. And local scenarios, of course, each and every one of you will have local organisations, um, have local contacts that again you can look to develop within the teaching and learning of, of learning AMA. So just some examples within this delivery guide of how to, to bring that learning AIM into the classroom. Learning AIM B and C are assessed together as we said earlier and practical activities here Development of employability skills, very important with all of the units in this suite of qualifications, because, of course, not all of our learners will go on to further and higher education. So that development of transferable skills, employability skills, is, is really important. And that, for me, um, is really integral to a vocational curriculum, that development of, of those skills. Being able to work as a team, be able to, to work on their own initiative, to be able to problem solve. So all of those are transferable into whatever industry our, our learners go into. So within these learning aims, um, students will need to look at definitions of health and well-being and those physical and mental and social health and well-being aspects and appreciate factors that impact on our health and well-being. So some of these topics may be quite sensitive. You may well have learners that are facing 
mental and physical challenges. And obviously you are professionals, so you will deal with those in, in sensitive and realistic discussion as part of teaching space activities. Opportunity within these learning aims to experience health monitoring tests. So again, those links with leisure and fitness facilities or a local university. Uh, or indeed your own PE and sports department, where students can actually have a go um, with health screening and to explore and experience um, health and fitness tests. But also as well opportunity within these learning aims, I feel, to uh, link with important tutorial topics. So if you're talking about um, issues around um, alcohol and, and drugs, for example, and nutrition, then all of these topics come into our PSHE, our tutorial curriculum. So there's links there that can really enforce and enhance the knowledge and understanding that we give to our, our learners. So within these learning aims, we're looking at students being able to monitor and compare data. So there's some numerical skills there coming in. So again, you might want to link into your, into your maths tutors and maths educators. Um, whether it be key skills or, or GCSE, um, to be able to really hone learners' skills in terms of analysing and comparison against normative data results. Safe space is important for our learners, as it as it says there within the delivery guide, so that we develop that confidence and that sensitivity um, around physical health screening. So we can get our students to produce posters, um, to be able to um, talk perhaps to other students on other BTEC curriculum around the importance of, of health monitoring tests and what, you know, what information, what data can, can mean. Um, and to be able to, you know, complete a really some great collaborative activities, uh, in fact, with these learning aims and a real opportunity, I think, to be able to um, give information um, to other, other students um, within the, the, the school or college setting, so be able to work with other other groups, as I say there, um, as well as as well as peers. And then moving on to um, a psychological, mental health and social well-being, um, a mind, excellent organization um, for you to access resources. Um, and teaching resources and discussion topics, uh, case studies, um, signs and symptoms um, and solutions, you know, ways forward to counteract symptoms and to ensure that we are maintaining and, and aspiring to optimum um, health and fitness and, and, and well-being you know, that overarching term of well-being across our physiological and, and psychological health. And then learning AMD. And again, you've got lectures and independent research. You might set up a forum, a discussion forum um, for, your, for this module. Uh, a Moodle page, um, or you might set up, you know, opportunity for blogs and vlogs within this, this unit 
um, as formative and summative assessment to again, you know, I keep saying this, but to bring the unit to life. So customer service skills are important within this learning aim uh, because students will need to um, choose someone to work with, um, to, to undertake um, physical um, and health and well-being assessment and to be able then to feed back to their client on their findings. So around that, there is um, work to do around um, how we feed back results and how we advise people to ensure that we're giving the best advice tailored to that person, so not generically tailored to that person, in terms of, of health strategies to move them forward, to celebrate what they're doing well, and to suggest improvements. And further activities they can utilise to further improve their physi physiological and psychological well-being and there I've put you know things like um, park rooms very popular very current uh, very in vogue at the moment um, maybe something that you, their client may not have heard about you might be able to um, the learners may be able to give information on times and dates of park runs within their locality, you know, so giving some real pinpointed, valid, useful, workable advice and strategies. Getting learners to participate in different activities, like such as yoga and Pilates. Um, is always um, good to do. So getting our learners to experience uh, different types of, of, of well-being activities that they might not have, have even thought about. Um, if there's opportunity to do that, um, then certainly do that because then they, once they've experienced it, they'll be better able to um, advise and possibly suggest to their client those types of activities if they're relevant. So really thinking here within Learning AMD about giving advice and celebrating success and, and offering strategies to further improve that's really specific to, to their client. The delivery guide pinpoints transferable skills. I mentioned those earlier. Um, and how they fit into the types of assessments, formative and summative, that you will be asking, maybe asking learners to do. So things like role plays, uh, administering the tests, the, the health tests, and then thinking about their knowledge of, of, of well-being practical and technical skills and thinking about sensitivity and, and normative data. So then the delivery guide offers you some information about um, the skills within the sector, so within the sport and fitness sector that are important you know, applying that knowledge to real life situations. So it's all very well knowing about the theory and knowing all of the anatomical terms, for example, but then being able to communicate that to a client who's on a gym induction, for example, is, is so important to do. Thinking about improving knowledge, you know, signs and symptoms, of poor physical and mental health, and then 
to think about strategies and solutions. And all of that involves a whole range of, of transferable skills um, from communication to problem solving to be able to, to develop within the, the industry or within further and higher education. So employer involvement, this unit would benefit from employer involvement, whether that be virtual or physical visits. Uh, shadowing, uh, potential opportunity for some voluntary work or work placement. Um, industry practitioners, maybe past BTEC students, for example, who've gone on to work in the industry or contacts that you have around health and well-being could be used to deliver specific sessions to guest lecture, for example, or to make a podcast um, or a YouTube clip of, of what their job involves. Again, to enhance your toolkit of unit resources. So the units internally assessed, learning aims, there we have again. And I've dropped there some example assessment strategies. So a report or an audio file. You know, sometimes we do ignore the, or, or we don't consider rather than ignore um, the importance of a verbal communication within our industry, within our sector. So making of an audio file with perhaps some supporting notes might be an assessment method that you think about presentations or role plays, the dreaded role play. Um, again, for learning aims B and C. And then some practical work around that physical testing of clients and feedback. And again, you know, use of a, a video or audio presentation record of practical activity can be used there. You know, those observation records can be used there to supplement your evidence. You know, and mirroring what happens in the real world, of course, vocational qualifications are very real world, is important to do as well, colleagues. So really thinking about what happens um, in the real world outside of the, the teaching space and classroom is important to, to bear in mind. And then to further with the delivery guide, I've got some suggestive delving a little bit deeper, um, giving a little bit more information around activities for specific. So formulating, if you like, um, an exemplar scheme of work. And again, these are this delivery guide is for you to you to you to utilize as you see fit, colleagues. So these are not written in tablets of stone, but these are for you to, to look at, to work into what you do already, and hopefully to find useful in the delivery and assessment of this unit, of unit B. And you'll be able to look through those. Again, I put the link on the slides and those are easily downloadable from, from the website. and some suggested times. And of course, you know, you will all have different uh, blocks to deliver this unit within. Uh, some colleagues deliver it all across one academic year. Some will deliver it over one semester or term. Other colleagues, colleagues will deliver over two terms. So again, this is to be used within your own setting. So worth spending some time you know, short term loss for, for long term gain with planning colleagues to have a look at. And indeed, if you've delivered the unit in previous years, then it, it's always worth and I'm sure you do review, you know, how that went. You know, how was there enough time on the delivery of, of learning AMA? Do you need more time? Um, 
what could you add in or take away to enhance the, the delivery of the qualification. So you'll see there the delivery guide works through some ideas and thoughts for all of the learning aims, A, B, C and D. Gives some suggested time scales, but again, that it's what fits into your timetable and schedule. And then links to other units. So I think this is always useful, colleagues, to have a look at which units complement each other. And obviously some signposts towards useful social media. Um, which of course our, our learners will be much more familiar with than, than we are, and some useful websites as well, and textbooks, and a glossary of key terms. I think again, this is always useful when we're launching a unit to look, have a look at the key terms that are going to be explored within a unit. And again, ensuring that our learners are familiar with those and there's no, you know, when they come up that they feel comfortable about talking about them, you know, what those actually mean, what they actually involve, being able to evaluate them, to analyse them, and to be able to feel comfortable in talking about these key terms within their, their assessments. So that, colleagues, is the delivery guide. I hope you found that useful to have, albeit a very quick walk through the delivery guide. And you'll find that on the website. And again, what I've done for you is put the links on there, colleagues. So what I've also um, put together for you, colleagues, is um, some further ideas around resources. Um, using podcasts, TED Talks, you know, so really building up our bank of resources to ensure the delivery of the unit is creative, is fresh, is current um, and relevant. So things like forest schools, you know, the benefits of outdoor learning and living has again never been more important than it is it is now. Open learn, free courses, so being able to access um, free resources and courses, and the links are embedded into the slides for your colleagues. So really useful. Open University Open Learn free course here um, that's really accessible for our level three learners, exploring health as your lifestyle really to blame. So some interesting aspects about lifestyle and its impact on, on health and how small changes can make massive differences. Looking at B2, learning A and B, B2, um, Black Dog Institute explores um, anxiety and depression. And again, these are sensitive issues, colleagues, um, that obviously as professionals, you will handle as, as you need to. Um, but some really inf useful information about well-being and ways to, to enhance well-being. And obviously the NHS have statistics on obesity and physical activity and diet, a lot of campaigns out there now um, around the importance of, of, of what we eat and its impact on our physical and mental health. Um, again, links into the tutorial system, uh, the Warwick Edinburgh Mental Wellbeing Scales, you'll use those as part of your assessment you use that as part of your assessment, should I say. So again, just popped a link on the slide there for you to easily access that, colleagues. Um, do link into tutorial topics um, because there will be a lot of resources there that you have access to. Um, knowing how to support clients, you know, and feeding back effectively 
so not aggressively or passively but assertively um and bearing in mind the tone and the way we feed back um and the way we communicate so again you know linking into perhaps english subjects key skills uh gcse english around those those communication skills written and verbal employer involvement we've talked about colleagues and the links to all the units you saw those detailed on our delivery guide um challenging at in these times in terms of, of physical visits. Um, so we may well look to virtual visits, uh, but as we move forward, then these type of activities are going to be, you know, again, extremely useful to, to bring in this unit to fruition. Think about the practical opportunities for assessment, both formatively and summatively, that this unit can offer. You know, our sports students will want not just the theoretical aspects of the qualification, they will be expecting some practical activities within each unit and there is opportunity within each unit within the suite of qualifications to deliver some aspects of practical. So. Remember I mentioned about those yoga and Pilates sessions that you might offer opportunity for learners to participate in and what resources and, and practical time and, and physical space you'll, you'll need. You know, it is quite easy, for example, to, to deliver um, within the teaching space some, some really effective breathing techniques, for example, you know, getting students to stand up every 20 minutes <clears throat> um, to do some simple stretches. So there's lots we can do within the physical teaching space that doesn't require a specific um, designated space to deliver. So again, it's, it's you know, maybe thinking outside the box and a bit, a bit more creatively. Uh, and again, not wishing to patronize you guys, I'm sure you do this already, but, you know, to think about building those in to, to the teaching and learning. Ensuring that the assessment methods and forms of evidence we get our students, our learners to generate are valid and vocationally relevant, are sufficient. So when we're thinking about maybe video and audio evidence, have we got that observation that record of practical activity to support that you know are our videos very clear um, is it very clear about which learning aim and assessment criteria are being assessed and are being awarded and if so how and why the evidence is authentic to avoid plagiarism um, and to be sure that our learners are understanding each aspect of the of the learning aim and the unit content. Um, and it's practical for us to be able to, to deliver and meeting the targeted assessment criteria. Authorised assignment briefs, we mentioned earlier. And again, we provide these but use them as a template colleagues um you know do alter the scenario to make it more contextualized for your setting talk about local fitness providers for example have a look at the assessment methods are they clear do they fit your cohort of students are they achievable so they're going to be suggested within the authorised assignment briefs. But again, you can alter these. Think about highlighting those command words. Think about focusing and asking students about how you want a report referenced, for example. You know, you're going to use Harvard or APA or have you got a referencing format the students are 
the learners are used to using. Think about the wording of those tasks. You know, I always, when I look at a, a, an assignment, an adaptation of authorised assignment brief, for example, I'm always looking at it in terms of, of, as a student, would I understand what my teacher wanted me to do? And don't forget the assignment checking service colleagues. Free service. Please use it. Upload your assignment, your amended authorised assignment brief, you know, with all your administrative details on there, teacher name, uh, dates that marry with your, that match your assessment plan, sources of information that you might want to add. So there'll be some suggested ones, but you might want to add in other sources of information and then upload it to the assignment checking service. And as well as internally verifying your assignment brief prior to issue to our learners, you can pop it through the assignment checking service as well. So it's, it's kind of like a third pair of eyes looking at your assessment brief. And important that our assessment tools, our assignments, our assessment briefs are, are clear and achievable so that we don't lead student, our learners down the wrong path. You know, they're absolutely clear about what we want them to, to produce summatively. And again, that practice in that formative stage is really going to ensure that our learners have got the best possible chance um, and opportunity to aspire you know, to the highest assessment criteria once you issue the, the summative assignment. Quality documents there, I've put that on the um, slide there, colleagues, the link to the latest quality documents. Now, your quality nominee will have undoubtedly provided these to you as a team, um, just making sure you're working with the most current and up-to-date versions of your uh, internal verification paperwork of internal verification of assignment briefs and internal verification of learner work. Uh, making sure you've got the latest guide to internal assessment and quality. And just making sure that you've got those and revisiting those each year so that you can download and store those in your team repository. Um, and everyone within the, the team can, can access those. So I've put you the link there to assist your colleagues. And again, a really useful link to download and, and save because the internal quality assurance process is, is, is really critical um, to ensuring that you're delivering this unit and indeed uh, all other units um, with national standards in mind and making sure that the students are being assessed effectively and, and correctly. So that when you come to standards verification, um, you can show um, a real audit trail and that the students are getting, you know, an excellent deal from, from your centre in terms of the teaching an assessment of this unit and indeed the qualification. So think about here, colleagues, again, some more support resources, lots and lots of support around this unit um, within this suite of qualifications. Um, fantastic resources from SIMSPA access to further training so either you know center-based training or generic online um, webinars and, and pre-recorded or live events sporting goals an excellent webinar series um, that um, is proving really popular um, to support 
and enhance the, the units and delivery of the qualification. A LinkedIn uh, page, which is really active in terms of, again, signposting resources and giving out latest and current information and news. And obviously links to further qualifications and partnerships. Um, so Pearson are partnering up with Sports Leaders UK to have some exciting developments around sports leaders qualifications. So again, you know, useful to explore those uh, and bookmark those links as well, colleagues. A mixture of paid for and free resources, colleagues, again, downloadable to your team repository, the authorised assignment briefs and the free assignment checking service the specification with the essential information for assessment decisions, delivery guide and delivery plans. So examples of how you may map the unit out over your academic year or, or years, depending on how, how long the learners are going to be with you. Information obviously from your lead standards verifier, your allocated, sports specific standards verifier center standardization materials you'll you'll probably know them as previously as oscar materials they're now center standardization materials important to standardize uh, and work as a team in terms of when you when you're assessing student work um, so different than internal verification standardization should be occurring as well uh, my BTEC um, has undergone some changes, so worth revisiting if you haven't done in a while. And then obviously paid for resources that are available, colleagues. So Sports Plus being a great example of um, a paid for resource. So um, interactive activities. Um, available for, for Unit B, um, you know, so you can, you can purchase it for Unit B, so quizzes, uh, on-screen uh, activities, drag and drop activities, uh, information, signposting, um, further resources and ideas around the delivery and assessment of, of, of Unit B. And indeed, you can purchase that with, with groups of units. Um, end of module assessments, which are always useful to check knowledge and understanding of that learning aim prior to issue of the summative assignment. Um, access via laptop or mobile devices, uh, which again is, is always useful as our learners you know will not necessarily be sitting in front of a, a laptop you know they're learning on the go very often with their mobile phone in in hand and could be anywhere um and again what i've done there is pop the the link there for you colleagues to explore and investigate and i think you know worth investigating btex sport plus um, as a potential resource for your department, for your teaching team. And I think to summarise, colleagues, a points to consider, and again, worth revisiting, even if you've delivered the unit before. So that variety of assessment methods, think about if it was a presentation last year, you might want to get the students to do a vlog this year, for example. Inducting and ensuring that our student handbook is robust. So ensuring there's information about how the students will be assessed, the links to employability and transferable skills, and also further in higher education the value added aspect of, of unit B, apart from being a mandatory unit within the 
2019 qualification? What other skills and knowledge can it give to our, to our learners? Those links with industry experts and practitioners, the staffing requirements and resources that you'll need, that supporting of that practical assessment. And I've put on the bottom there, time spent planning will reap rewards. It's short term loss for long term gain. You need some time to think through and review and reflect. We're always trying to get our students to be, our learners to be reflective practitioners, aren't we? So it's certainly time to take our own advice in terms of, of delivery and assessment of, of units within this qualification. Further help and support from our excellent subject advisor. I'm sure everybody will know Penny, Penny Lewis. Um, always happy to help, very knowledgeable and approachable. Uh, sign up for those subject advisor updates, colleagues. Uh, so you'll be in a loop uh, for the teaching and PE news. Penny works with the A-level and GCSE qualifications um, and also the 2016 uh, sports qualifications as well so certainly worth signing up there for subject advisor updates some information on how to get hold of of penny there um, and some further information about finding out more around this suite of qualifications So colleagues, that's it from me. I hope you found it useful. I hope you've taken something from, from um, this presentation. I want to just wish you the best of luck, colleagues, with the qualification. I look forward to seeing some of you on future events and to stay safe and well and healthy, colleagues. Thank you for your time today. Thank you. <laughs>